All right, well, first I would like to thank the um, wonderful people who have put on this event, the Texas GIS Day event. Uh, it's really cool to see so many people interested in GIS. It's been a long time love of mine and I love sharing it with others. Uh, my name is Stephanie Long. I'm a professor of GIS at Austin Community College. And I wanted to share with you today the program that we offer here at Austin Community College. We do have an online certificate award that is available to anyone in Texas. You never have to come to Austin in person. So I wanted to make sure and share that information with you. We also have a level two certificate award and even an associate's degree in GIS here at Austin Community College. So here in the GIS department at Austin Community College, we provide hands-on professional instruction and we offer courses at our Highland campus and our Riverside campus. But if you can't make it to campus here in Austin, that's not a problem. We offer flexible online courses and these allow you to focus on the curriculum instead of worrying about getting to campus on time. Our program and curriculum are shaped by Austin's GIS leaders and each course teaches the GIS technology used by professionals, including our graduates who work for a diverse group of public and private sector employees. So I saw this quote the other day and I really liked it. So geospatial technology helps our packages get delivered quicker. It helps us plan and keep track of utilities. It helps us predict behavior before it happens, among other things. And I really thought that was a great quote by Michael Iveson. Um, if we let it, geospatial tells the story of the human experience, what makes us tick and what drives us forward. And I felt this was really fitting. The, projects that our students work on across the program have to do with real world projects. And we even collaborate with local agencies and organizations in the form of a service learning project where students are actually completing a project for that agency or organization and really making an impact and taking that geospatial technology and expanding beyond what we're doing in the classroom and helping out the local community. So today I wanted to share some information about our program about how we support students and the faculty that teach the classes here at Austin Community College. Within the program, we teach many different types of analyses, and one of those is geostatistical analysis. So in 1854, John Snow was tasked with performing and presenting his spatial analysis, but back then he was using pen and paper. Today we use GIS and its tools to recreate that original ghost map. So we reinforce the findings of John Snow using vector, raster, and geostatistical analyses. This ghost map project is taught in our intermediate class, and it steps students through how to execute tabular, vector, raster, and how to use geostatistical analytical tools. This is a map series that was created by one of our students this year, and it shows the raster analysis, the vector analysis, and the geostatistical analysis using those original data points that were collected by John Snow in 1854. We also teach feasibility analysis. So I don't know if you all are aware, but there is a race to privatize space. And we've seen a lot of companies like SpaceX and Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin leading that charge. And this project students will determine where a spaceport could be located along the Texas coast and what kind of impact that spaceport is going to have. We also map out a network of a power line grid from the main station to the launch station. So there are requirements that have to be met. It has to be located within the US. It has to be near the equator, which is oriented eastward, and that helps reduce rocket fuel costs. And it has to be located in an unpopulated coastal area. So students work through determining if the control and launch facilities can fit on the site, if there's any significant environmental impacts such as wetlands or noise, and whether the control and launch site can be connected through a dedicated power line. I'm gonna move myself out of the way here. <laughs> Another type of analysis we teach is a suitability analysis. And this determines the appropriateness of a given area for a particular use. So in this case, we are determining where is the best location for a trail within this existing park. And so students look at 
geographic information and attribute information, and they reclassify several different data sets, including the zones of the park, the type of soil, and the slope. So we're able to identify the preferred location of a trail within this park based on that criteria. So we see and interact with the world in 3D, not in 2D. And so we also teach 3D analyses and visualization using um, the GIS software. In this case, we are working on a project where we're analyzing 3D data, creating a 3D visualization, and determining the volume of earth to be removed to make way for a new lake. This takes place on our ACC Highland campus. This campus is a national model for sustainable, adaptive, and community-minded reuse. So the mall, shopping mall, is actually where our classes are taught now. The shopping mall originally opened in 1971. And in 2012, ACC started acquiring the property of the area. They opened phase one in 2014 and phase two in 2021. And so these future phases are gonna be implemented with the surrounding development. We have mixed use development, we have office space going in, and this lake is meant to serve as a park for those surrounding um, customers. And so students work through what it takes to actually put a lake in and how to plan the park space and how to visualize that in a 3D. So we teach classes in the classroom. We have hands-on professional instruction during lecture and lab at our ACC Riverside and Highland campuses. We also offer hybrid and high flex courses. Hybrid means you come to class once a week and then you do the other half of the class at home. And then high flex means that every week you can decide if you want to come to class in person on campus or if you want to attend class remotely. And this offers some flexibility if you're interested in having an online option, but also feel like you could come to campus and get some help. We offer several awards within the program. This includes the JS Level 1 Certificate Award. This is our one-year certificate, and it's offered completely online to anyone in Texas. We also have our Level 2 Certificate, which are the more advanced classes. This is our two-year award. And this is where you start to learn how to automate your GIS workflows, how to work with advanced problems such as machine learning and artificial intelligence. With the raster class, we have drones, a quadcopter drone that we fly. It has multi-resolution bands and we can process that imagery and LIDAR data in the class. We also teach you how to work with Python and other programming languages and how to develop web served GIS. We also offer an associate's degree. So each of our awards are stackable. And what that means is that if you take the first class of the level one certificate, it is going to apply to your associate's degree. And so all of the credit that you're earning in those two certificates will help you earn your associate's degree. And this degree can be awarded within a two year time frame. So it's a pretty quick, quick um, uh, degree that you can get. So our courses are offered online, on campus, and a mixture of the two, like I've mentioned. We have several classes, and I just showed you some projects of those classes, but I wanted to make sure you have our website. It's austincc.edu slash GIS. And on this website, you can click the tabs across the top and explore more information about our program. We have a detailed listing of the courses here. If you want to explore those different courses, there's two introductory courses that you can take right away that don't have any prerequisites. The way we've shaped our program comes from feedback by local professionals. So we have an advisory board and that committee serves to um, advise us on how we're doing in our program and whether we're meeting the needs of the industry. Some recent initiatives, we have moved to the Highland Mall campus. This is the Highland Learning Center. It used to be a shopping mall and now it's a campus that offers all kinds of programs like jewelry and culinary arts and computer science. We also have a drama department. There's a lot going on here. We also teach classes on our Riverside campus, which is on the east side of Austin, which allows some flexibility for commuting across the water. 
And our program is open to everyone in Texas. We welcome remote students from anywhere around Texas in our high flex courses. So the instructor and the students are on campus, but you can attend from anywhere remotely. And we'll have you up on the big screen where you can hear us and see us and vice versa. We also offer continuing education courses. If there's an interest that anyone has in developing some custom courses for your agency organization or your school. And we're integrating some really cool technology in our coursework. We have a Robota Eclipse drone, which allows us to collect ortho mosaics, like the imagery you see here behind me. We also have a GeoSlam 3D. So we're able to map internal and external spaces in 3D by a handheld device that collects LiDAR. We're also working with FME, artificial intelligence, machine learning, Google Earth Engine, and AWS. So I mentioned the Highland Campus used to be a mall. It's now part of a master plan for developing the area. We have office and commercial space, residential space, and then everything you see in blue is the ACC Highland Campus. The GIS department here is located in the phase two, building 2000. And we have a nice huge parking garage right next to us that makes it easy to come to campus and get to class on time. We've had some recent events, open houses, and I just wanted to share those pictures with you. Um, these open houses allow us to have students come to campus and see where your classes are and where you can find your faculty or your instructors, where their offices are, and kind of explore the campus facilities, like where to park and how to get to class and everything. So in this top picture on the left here, this is one of our classrooms. We have a projector at the front. We have the camera at the front so we can, our remote students can see us. We have speakers and microphones around so we can all hear each other, whether you're in the classroom or remote. We have 15 computer stations with two monitors each, which allows us to really um, take advantage of having the software open on one screen and then your instructions open on the other screen. In the center picture here, you can see the drone that we have. This is a fixed wing drone. You basically, throw it in the air and it flies along a path that you've set for it and it follows that path and then it returns back to you and lands on its own. And then we can take the imagery from that camera and create mosaics that we can work with in the GIS software. We also have open labs. So students are supported not only in the classroom, but through tutoring and open labs while they're working on their lab materials. So we have offices and we have classrooms and they're here on the Highland campus. If you ever want to come visit us, this is where we are, this little yellow space that's highlighted in the floor plan here. And this semester we have started offering high flex classes. So with high flex technology, we're able to host remote students. So if you look at the image right behind me, we have a TV in the room and we can see the virtual students attending. We also have students in the classroom. And we can all hear each other and see each other as if it was a real classroom. If you are a remote student attending, this is what you would see. So we've got a camera that shows you the classroom and your classmates. And then we can also share the screen or the projector with you so you're not missing anything while the class is going on. So we have an excellent program here. Of course, I'm a little biased, but we do. <laughs> Uh, but we also support our students in many different ways. And so I wanted to share that with you. There is a local conference, the Texas GIS Forum, and we host students there. We encourage them to submit their work for the map gallery or present. We also offer field trips. This bottom picture here are ACC students at Tenris here in downtown Austin. If you visit our website, there is a support page. And in that support page, you will see our tutor schedule. So we offer free GIS tutoring to all of our GIS students. And they're available multiple days a week, either in person or remotely. We also have a blog. And in that blog, we share GIS job postings, upcoming GIS events, and any activities that are related to the program. We also have guest speakers, both remotely and in person. So guest speakers are current GIS industry professionals, and they come into our classrooms or visit us remotely and answer questions that students have and demonstrate some of the really cool projects that they're working on. 
We also get involved with the community. So we work with um, local agencies and organizations and different events, and we host activities to help future students come through and see what GIS is and what they can do with GIS. We also have something called ACC Inc. or the ACC Incubator. And this is a chance for students to serve as interns and develop their professional skills before graduating. So we have internships that we've collaborated with the Texas Natural Resources Information System, with the Texas General Land Office, um, the Commission on State Emergency Communications. We are now working with ACC. So ACC has hired GIS staff. We're working with the facilities and construction team to develop um, campus maps, both very detailed internal and external. And if any of you are interested, we're happy to collaborate with you as well. Our interns are paid well and they are, can work up to 19 hours a week. And it's a great opportunity for them to learn new skills and abilities. And our students, our goal here is to help them graduate and help them get a job in the GIS industry. And you can see some of our alumni here and where they've gone on to get a GIS position. On our website, we also have examples of student projects. So if you visit our website and click on the maps tab, this is gonna take you to the map gallery. And here you can see work that students have done in the different classes across the program. And I'm just gonna highlight a few of those. So this is a project that a student completed within our data acquisition and analysis class. This student worked with the Southwest Travis County Groundwater Conservation District to determine how the land cover has changed over a series of years. And not only did she do that, but she took it a little further by working with a higher resolution raster data set. So we're able to take raster data and compare the different years and determine what kind of change has happened. In the table, you can see the change across the years and the different percentages of water, developed, undeveloped, and cultivated land. This is another example of a student working with that same organization. In this case, they were looking at wildfire potential. So assessing the fire risk within the study area and determining any groundwater features such as water wells that might be identified as being at risk for wildfire. We also teach students not just how to make posters and present in kind of that static format, but in a way to present in a dynamic format. This is a dashboard that's in ArcGIS Online. The student went out in the field using Collector for ArcGIS and collected information about the trees that were in that study area. So the size of the trees and the type of the trees and the average health of the tree. And this is a dynamic dashboard. So as you zoom in and out, the different charts and numbers change based on the extent of the map that you're working in. So we do teach students how to collect data in the field using mobile devices. And then we bring that data that we've collected back and we perform different analyses. This is another example of a student project. This is the farm to plate travel time analysis. So looking at how many miles your food travels in order to make it to your plate. So you can see the different types of foods. And in the main United States map, we're seeing the distance that food has traveled. Some of it really far. And then in the bottom left, we have an inset map that's showing a more detailed analysis of the Austin area. So here in Austin, we're located in Travis County. And you can see that some of our food comes from about 150 miles away just to make it to our plate. This is another example of a 3D visualization and analysis. Students will assess a current um, stormwater pond. This is where stormwater drains into and is collected. And what we do is we visualize the volume of the pond. So what is the capacity of that pond? And then we visualize it in a 3D view and create an animation where you can kind of spin that 3D view and investigate it. We also teach plan and metrics and we use Google Earth Pro and SketchUp to develop a 3D model within those plan and metrics. So here students de design their own arena and place that 3D arena 
within their project space. We have a class in the level one certificate. It's the last class and it's called the capstone class. And in this class, students can work on any project they want of their own interest. And they have a faculty member to support them and help them find the data that they need. And so in those capstone projects, we've got a wide variety of topics that come across and some really neat maps that students have produced over time. We also help students develop a portfolio. This e-portfolio helps you showcase the work that you've done in the program, the different projects that you've worked on, and the maps that you've created. And you can take that digital portfolio with you when you go looking for a GIS job. We encourage students to take the work they've done and present those at poster contests or map gallery contests. And our students have actually won those contests before. So Janine was one of our students who won first place in the 2019 Texas GIS Forum. And she was assessing the playgrounds in the area and how many trees they had in the playgrounds, how much shade structure or tree shade was available at each playground. And how did that look across the study area? And we also take student work or posters to the map gallery at the Esri user conference whenever we can. And we showcase that work to thousands of professionals that are coming through that conference, which is a really excellent opportunity to learn more about GIS. Okay, so I've talked about our program and our students. And next, I wanted to touch on our faculty. We have a really awesome collection of faculty here at Austin Community College. We're very fortunate to have a growing team of industry professionals teaching our courses. Um, Sally Hall, Sean Moran, and myself are full-time faculty members. We also have program assistant Jennifer Black, who knows everything and can help you with anything. And then we have adjunct instructors that are currently working in the GIS industry and have some really cool jobs and some really interesting projects that they're working on there at work. And they bring that experience and that knowledge to the classroom by teaching classes with us here at Austin Community College. Okay, that's what I have for you today. Move myself over here. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions? Or is there anything else that I can show you about the GIS program here at Austin Community College? I have a question. Hi, Stephanie, this is Mara. Hi. How are you? Great. Um, how is this? This is accessible to everybody in the state of Texas. What happens if I share this link with someone who doesn't live in Texas? What's the difference? Yeah, so once you get out of Texas, you're out of kind of the service area for Austin Community College for this program. So I think what happens is the tuition is kind of high. <laughs> so I think that's going to be the main issue is it's tuition because you're not a resident. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, my question. And I love ACC. Just had to say it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we do have students that are out of Texas. So we have students who started in the program here at ACC, and then they got a job outside of Texas, but they kept taking classes with us to finish their award. So I know it is feasible. I'm just, I'm not sure about the cost for that. All right, we have a question in the chat. Any tips for high school students on what they can do now to prepare to attend? Yes, so we have two classes that don't have any prerequisites. Introduction to GIS, which is GISC 1411 and Introduction to Geospatial Data, which is GISC 1479. Those you can take straight out of high school or even while you're in high school, if you want to. And they don't have any prerequisites. We just ask that you be comfortable with navigating a computer. So opening File Explorer, creating a folder structure, moving files around. Um, we ask that you be comfortable with browsing the internet. And we ask that you be comfortable with working with zip files. So extracting a zip file or creating your own zip file. And then some basic math, but really that's about it. We teach you everything else you need to know in those classes. All right, any other questions? And I'm happy to answer questions about anything, not just ACC, but GIS in general. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for attending. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. 
You can email me anytime or you can visit our website and contact us through that way. It's austincc.edu slash GIS. And then my email is stephanie.long at austincc.edu. And if you don't mind, please be sure to rate this session at the bottom of the session page.